discuss this in more detail, I'm very pleased to welcome Lawrence Young, virologist and professor of molecular oncology, University of Warwick, to the program. Lawrence, great to have you back. Thanks for joining us. Um, so first off, what do we really know about how well the vaccines we currently have protect against the variant from India. The UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock seems to suggest that early data uh, does suggest that the vaccines will work, but he didn't give a lot to back that up. I think there are two sets of data. There's laboratory data, which demonstrates that antibodies generated by vaccination appear to be able to block or neutralize the virus. But perhaps the most significant data is if you look at the current levels of infection, particularly in areas in the northwest of the country. And um, you can actually see that people who are younger are getting infected and that infection levels are very low in those people who are over 40 or 50. In other words, the group of people who have been vaccinated. So it looks like in the real world that vaccination is preventing people from getting infected with the Indian variant. Very clear. Um, now, the UK, relative to other countries around the world, does a lot more genomic sequencing, which has enabled the UK to identify new variants very readily. Um, my question is whether or not um, places like the US and Europe are likely to also have um, its significant cases of the variant from India, and perhaps it's just not being showcased to the same degree because they're not doing as much genomic sequencing as we're doing here in the UK. Yeah, that's a, that's a really valid point. I mean, one one of the issues, of course, is with these variants is um, we've you know, and we've learned this the hard way is once they're out there, they're out there. Uh, we're seeing that with the Indian variant, for instance, today we know that more than eighty six different local areas within the United Kingdom have uh, this virus. Um, so I think if we go by what we've learned about the South African variant, the Brazilian variant, the UK variant, that once you start sequencing and you sequence a substantial proportion of your population, you will find these different variants. It's very hard to contain these more transmissible variants once they're out there in the world. Hmm. Professor, now, uh, we all understand the need to be cautious while we learn more about these variants. But to go back to uh, Juliana's initial point, how much time is it going to take for us to get more information on this specific variant, how transmissible it is, how effective the vaccines are? You alluded to the vaccines probably being quite effective in real life scenarios. But when will we know definitively? And of course, that is going to have a huge implication for when we can get to that next phase of the reopening, the full reopening, if it does happen on June 21st. Will we have all that data before that time timeline? I think the next two weeks are crucial. You know, we've, we've opened up in a big way, as you know, from, uh, from, from Monday this week in the UK. Um, and we're all rather hesitant about that because we know that even without the Indian variant, this opening where people are going to be more out and about, they're going to be indoor areas, etc., is going to result inevitably in an increase of infection anyway. This is now compounded by the Indian variant. So the key issue of how quickly it spreads how many people fall seriously ill, irrespective of their age, and how effective the vaccines are, I think will be something that will become very, very clear in the next two weeks. And over that time period, we should know particularly whether this is more transmissible than the UK variant and at what level it's, tra it's, it's transmitting. And in the meantime, obviously, what we have in the UK at the moment is a race between the virus and vaccinations and getting vaccination out there as, as widely as possible.